I'm setting up. It's been mad long trying to remember how to record. Your department's just you, right? Yes, Jim, but I am not easy to manage. Greetings, good day, and welcome. I'm Deanna, project manager and grants consultant, and today I was asked to kindly make a video on maintaining communication, as mentioned in your skills section, as a black girl. So, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. More specifically, we're gonna first understand the challenges of remote communication, then get into some tools and technologies for effective communication. We'll talk a little bit about building relationships remotely, maintaining clear and open communication, looking at a case study and specifically one of my own success stories when it comes to maintaining communication within my field of work, and as always, some final thoughts, tips, and a quick wrap up. Building relationships and maintaining effective communication is really difficult, but hopefully what we cover in this video today will help you improve and become a much better communicator if you are a remote worker. So let's dive right into it and talk about the challenges that comes with remote communication. Throughout the years of working remotely, there are three common challenges that I've noticed that have impacted me and others who are also remote workers. First and foremost would be the time zone differences. Now, I don't know about you, you, but this is something that literally still trips me up. You got me my company that I currently work for right now, we are literally scattered across the entire country. So a lot of the times our times don't align. With these different time zones that could lead to delayed responses and it could also have an impact on deadlines because I mean, simply if I am in New York and I, in my head, I'm like, all right, this is due by 1 p.m. Someone who is in California, their 1 p.m. is not my 1 p.m. Like you see the confliction? Now, this might not always be the case for you. Maybe you are based in New York and your whole team and company is also based in New York even though you guys are remote workers. So time zone differences is something that you don't have to worry about. However, if you are like me and all your employees are everywhere and y'all are kinda all on different time zones and such, this could be a challenge, a quite annoying challenge at that. Time zones are everlastingly frustrating. Second is cultural barriers. This just means that there is a lot of diversity in work styles and how people operate and how they communicate. Though you might have a certain style that you communicate or you have certain practices which allow you to communicate better, that might not always translate to the rest of your team or it might not translate to like an external partner that you want to connect with. So sometimes figuring out like what everyone's best practices are are and making that work together in a very cohesive system, it, it's a doozy to figure out. And last challenge, which I feel sometimes creates a lot of unnecessary tension in the workplace is the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. Because we are working remotely, a lot of things are being done by email, maybe through video calls or even just a regular phone call. So you don't have that level of human interaction with people. So you don't pick up on certain tones, you don't pick up on certain like like mannerisms and how people operate. So if you're doing everything by email, you know, somebody's email may sound like, oh, why are they talking to me like that? And you know, they really not trying to talk to you like that. You know what I mean? A lot of nonverbal cues are missed if you are trying to communicate remotely. And sometimes that could lead to misunderstandings. So though I do love working remotely and how much flexibility and freedom it gives me, I be wanting to interact with people sometimes. So I be grateful for the moments that my job has retreats, that we meet up in person because it just lets us, you know, connect and understand each other more in live, you know, live and in action versus through a screen. Though there are challenges that comes with working remotely, I definitely wouldn't change being a remote worker. I just develop solutions. So we're gonna talk about those right now. With that being said, let's now shift gears and talk about tools and technology technologies for effective communication. Setting up a communication tool is hands down going to be the best decision that you ever make if you are a remote worker. First and foremost, which I don't think this is a term that I've used in years, is instant messaging. I know back in the day, I loved using AOL Instant Messenger. I had my screen name live and active and I was easily able to just talk to my friends whenever I wanted. Those communication tools and instant messaging works the same way with you being a remote worker. I've mentioned this before, 
but I'm gonna mention it again. I know you've heard of tools like Slack, Google Meets, they have chats via Zoom, Microsoft got Teams. Like there's so many tools that you can use to just instantly chat with your team members that you don't always have to do everything through email. I am a firm believer in a statement that this could be sent in an email, but sometimes it can't be sent in an email. But sometimes you also don't have to have an entire meeting to get the answer that you need for something. If you have a instant messaging tool, you can just instantly send out what you need and they can just respond to you in live time. It just makes day-to-day -day communication much smoother and much quicker. And like I said, everything doesn't have to be a meeting, but everything also doesn't require an email. Now, during those times where an instant message is not enough and you need to dive a little bit deeper than an email, that's when I want you to make sure that you have video conferencing available. We all love Zoom. I know people who still use Skype for all my people from back in the days that used to use Uvu. All of that applies here. Because there is such a lack of face-to-face -face interaction, you want to make sure that you are trying to have as many video calls as possible when appropriate. Just so you develop better communication, you better understand each other, you know each other's like tones, mannerisms, how people talk, how people operate, etc, etc. And honestly, sometimes I like to be able to meet with people on Zoom because us going back and forth and just having that banter allows me to, I don't know, turn on my brain a little bit better and I'm able to just think more. And now we are like brainstorming in action and things that I would not be able to communicate to you or translate to you in an email, we are now doing in this video call. And sometimes when I'm just shooting the shit with people, that's when I come up with some of my best ideas. So video calls, video conferencing, all of that. And not only do video calls make it easier to interact with people, but they also have a special feature called recording so you don't have to sit there and take notes during a meeting like you can give the person that you're talking to undivided attention and just go through the recording later to pull out any notes that you may need to bring forth to any projects tasks and such that you have to work on like we love that Next, if you don't already have one, I want you to make sure that you are setting up a project management software or just a task management software of some sort. I don't want to repeat myself because I definitely talked about the best project management tools for first time project managers. So if you would like more information about what PMS might be right for you, go check out that video. But overall, having a system set up where people can keep track of their tasks so you have some sort of better accountability to make sure that everyone's stays on track to what they need to get done and just you know stay aligned and everybody sees what they're doing what needs to be done and what has already been completed all of that can be showcased in a project management software additionally many of the softwares can integrate with other tools and stuff that you're using so if you use gmail yahoo outlook and such you can connect that to your pms and that'll streamline your processes and everything that much better but like i said if you would like guidance on what PMS might be best for you and the place that you work check the description okay okay now in order to really have effective communication with your team with external partners and whoever else that you need to connect with you have to make sure that you are also building those relationships remotely as well first and foremost make sure that you have regularly scheduled check-ins with your team first before you even think about scheduling a check-in, make sure you are doing so with purpose and frequency. Sometimes you have to meet with your boss once a week. Sometimes you have to meet with the larger team bi-weekly. Sometimes you only got to check in with somebody once a month. However, you need to sit down and determine what the purpose for those meetings will be and if that is the appropriate frequency for said meetings. For example, the other project managers at my company and myself have a monthly meeting that we're on the call for about an hour and an hour and a half. We determined that that's the amount of time we need and that's how frequent we need these meetings to occur. And before we come to the meeting, you know, we create an agenda, we bring forth anything that we need to discuss in our designated departments or as a company in its entirety. For those regular check-ins, you'll be able to foster a stronger connection with your team and whoever else that you're working with. In addition to making sure that you have a purpose in bringing an agenda to the meeting so you guys can discuss 
any assistance that you all may need for any projects or tasks that you're completing any like updates that people should know about in regards to the work that you're doing and maybe any personal developments or personal things that you got going on that you would like to share with your team because it is impacting your work and their work and etc etc now along with having those regular check-ins and making sure that you guys are all aligned and staying on task and all that great stuff that comes with being a remote professional worker I also want you to make sure that you are doing some team building activities check-ins don't always have to be about work like sometimes people just want to decompress I know at my job we have our Monday check-ins and yes it is a professional setting and we are presenting work that we're doing if there's any assistance that we need if there's any updates that we need the company in its entirety to be aware of but in that same breath if the meeting is like 30 minutes long we spend about five to ten minutes with those like professional updates and the remaining 20 we're just shooting this and just checking in on each other seeing how everyone's doing you know sharing a good laugh before we really start the work day and such like you don't always have to have a meeting with work purposes like you know you could just check on your team and make sure everybody is fine you know treat them like humans what a concept. It could literally be something as simple as a virtual coffee break where everybody brings a coffee, tea, water, smoothie, whatever the case, and y'all are just talking, catching up with each other, understanding each other much more, and building y'all relationship and to further build out relationships with your team or your external partners also want you to make sure that you are providing recognition and feedback i know in my line of work it is a requirement that we acknowledge our funders and our donors and anybody else who is supporting the work that we do your job should work the same way whatever field that you are working in make sure that you are giving shout outs that people see that you see them that you are giving acknowledgement and praise and such like who doesn't love to be uplifted so make sure you are giving that as much as you possibly can and that will just better build the relationship that you have with your team and anybody else that you want to connect to the place that you're working and just as much as you are giving praise and acknowledgement for all the great work that you and your team are doing I also want you to make sure that you are giving and open to receiving constructive feedback heavy on constructive the feedback that you are giving others and the feedback that you are receiving should be supportive and should foster growth people should be able to take whatever notes that you're providing whatever guidance that you are seeking to give them and be able to make actionable steps and movements from them like don't just be like mm, i think that could be better that's people can't work with that i hate that and always make sure that you are giving your feedback in a way that is graceful and not you know attacking bringing anybody down because yes people make mistakes and that may impact your work but people are also human human error happens so when you are giving feedback just as much as you want it to be constructive and you want the people to grow from it you also want them to make sure that they feel supported and that when they are trying to grow and improve that they have you along the way to do that you feel me now let's shift and talk about maintaining clear and open communication first and foremost to ensure that you are having effective communication make sure that off rip you are setting clear expectations off rip every individual involved in whatever project or whatever work that you're working on they should know exactly what roles they are to play they should know what responsibilities are on them to get the project done and there should be some like level of like metrics of success for people to follow so they know that they are hitting the expectation mark that you set for said project. Your communication will be much more clear and much more open if people have a immediate clear understanding of what it is they have to do and to avoid any confusion or such in the process because you made the goals and such and expectations clear from the very beginning. Clear expectations equals better communication communication point blank period next and we're using the word feedback again but to maintain clear and open communication make sure you have something called feedback loops this means that you are taking the time to create channels for feedback whether you work in a hospital whether you work for a fortune 500 whether you work at an animal shelter or wherever the case may be I want you to establish regular channels and opportunities for team members to provide feedback on project processes and their personal experience 
sense throughout the course of said project. Having those channels and having your team members provide feedback allows you to take all the good and all the bad that might have happened during the process of a project and apply it to the next one so that your communication is even better and then the process of the next project is much more smoother. Less hiccups, less bumps in a road. Bro, I can't talk, oh my God. Less hiccups, less bumps in a road and everybody stays on the same page and everybody is in agreement with whatever changes and such that you have suggested to make to the process of the project. And third, I want you to make sure that you have a clear approach to conflict resolution. Now, this is a mix of, are you someone who is able to identify any conflicts early and head on and try to nip them in the bud as quickly as possible? And do you have a structured way in which you are solving problems and techniques and such in which you are addressing any problems that may arise during the course of you and your team working on a project? As I've mentioned in numerous videos, there will be projects that go completely smooth, boom, bam, bow, you don't have no issues. Other times, it won't always be that easy. And you will have to figure out what to do if a problem were to arise. If you're looking for ways to grow as a problem solver, yes, I made a video about that, so go check that out right now. Now, in my line of work, communication, especially remotely, is so important. And I wanna just take a look at one of my own success stories and how me being able to maintain effective communication as a remote worker has benefited my role and the organization I work with. As you all may or may not know, but are about to know, I'm a grants consultant and I have been working with the New Work Opportunity Youth Network for a number of years now. More specifically, we're gonna focus on the award that I got for them from the Healthcare Foundation of of New Jersey. We initially applied to the grant program in September 2021. So this was still like peak pandemic. Everything was virtual. Nobody was really in person that much or at all. After the submission and just waiting, we were invited to further discuss NOYN with their program officer in October 2021. So with this connection, we had to present reports, evaluation charts. We shared a lot of the work that we did via social media and our website and YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. As a response and after communicating with the program officer for several months, we were then invited to present NOYN to the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey board members in February 2022. So at this presentation, I created a PowerPoint and we were required to answer any additional questions during the meeting that the board members may have had. As a result, we were awarded $160,000 in April 2022. And like I've mentioned before, after receiving the award, the work doesn't stop there. So as a response, we had to maintain biannual report submissions. We had to do an acknowledgement of the award itself. We had to make sure that we were keeping the program officer and the board members and everyone else a part of the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey's team in the loop with the, any work that we were doing because they were now a part of our community and one of our partners and funders. So now fast forward to today, the results of that communication and making sure that we stay connected with the program officer and the Healthcare Foundation has resulted in three consistent years of continued funding from this partnership. Now I know you guys are probably a little bit more curious about how I built out this partnership. Somebody has already asked me that, so we will be discussing this in a future video. So stay tuned for that. Now let's quickly wrap this up and finish out today with just some final thoughts and tips. All in all, if you are a remote worker who is looking to communicate better, it's just going to take a couple of tools, a couple of resources, and honestly just being as active as a member of whatever company that you work for as much as possible. Make sure you're regularly connecting with people. Make sure you're taking advantage of the different tools and databases and softwares that's available to make maintain communication. Take the time to learn and understand your team and grow with them. Get a better idea of their work styles, their work ethics, how they best communicate and how you can bring in those multiple styles to make it into one cohesive practice. Establishing effective communication is not something that's going to happen overnight. So please be patient with yourself and your team, but I promise you it's possible. And I only know it because I've been doing it. Well, would you look at that? You made it to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Sometimes goodbyes are a bitch. <laughs> T-shirt idea, goodbye stink.
as I always say, these videos are inspired by you guys. So if anybody has any questions that you want me to dive deeper into, to do some research on, make sure to leave any of your questions in the description below. If you are someone who is working remotely and you have your own tips and tricks on how you maintain effective communication, make sure to drop that in the comments as well. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, bye y'all.